evening. Welcome to the Advanced Research section of the Graduate Research Series. My name is Jeannie Hoover and I'm a Science Librarian at Joyner Library. And my name is Christine Andreessen and I'm the Instructional Design Librarian at Lombus Health Sciences Library. We're going to talk to you today about a variety of things to help you with your research projects. Um, the first one that we're going to talk about is how you can define your topic. Um, also how to gather background information brainstorming keywords, and then finally how to search and evaluate those resources that you find. Yes. Get started, we'll work on defining your topic. I can't tell you how often we get someone coming into the library that says, I want to do a paper on diabetes. Do you, can you even estimate how many articles are going to be published about diabetes? That kind of a topic is too broad to effectively conduct library research. Examples are the same. Pollution is too broad. There will be too many results for you to sift through. A more focused topic would be acid rain, which is a good start, but again, still going to get too many articles. So they narrowed it once further to specify the United States as the area for acid rain, and then combined all of those things to make an actual research question that they would try to find literature on. What can the United States do to prevent acid rain? There can be topics that are too specific as well. Things have been published on every topic imaginable. So it really is finding that balance between not too broad, but not too specific. Find a comfortable range, and a librarian can work with you if you're having trouble defining your actual topic. So there's a few places that you can look for background information. The first one are review articles, and you're going to see this come up in your search results most likely. And those are excellent places to look and find out more information about your topic, as well as getting a list of uh, references that you can use for your paper as well. You also want to look at encyclopedias. Both Lapis and Joyner Library have subject encyclopedias, so more than likely we have something in your area that you can look at. And then finally, books and book chapters are excellent sources for getting some background information. And when you gather background information, you're going to have a better understanding of your topic as well as having some keywords that you can use in the databases. So now we're going to talk about brainstorming some keywords. And we usually recommend this before you go into a database to come up with some terms for your topic, um, some synonyms, maybe alternate spellings, for example, British English and American English spelling differences. And this can help you um, get started. And that way, when you start your search, if you only get a search with 10 results, you can go, quickly go in and edit that search and run it again with different terms. So here's one example of a search question that you might have for a paper. Uh, what is the connection between smoking and depression among teenagers? What I want to do is break down my topic into my main ideas. So I have smoking, depression, and teenagers listed up there. And then I want to start um, developing some keywords that I can also use for that topic. So the first one I have is smoking, and those are some other synonyms that I could use. Cigarettes, tobacco, nicotine, and then I want to move on to depression. Um, some other synonyms might be mental health, sadness, mood disorder, mood, and then finally teenagers, teens, adolescents, youth. So I can make this list, and Christine's going to be talking about Boolean operators with you, but that can kind of give you a sense of how you can use these terms in your search. Um, you want to combine your ideas, and then you can use your keywords as some or searching. All right. Since I don't feel comfortable trying to guess every keyword an author might have used in his or her article, another option for searching is to use controlled vocabulary. A lot of library resources have their own personal thesaurus and something called subject heading searching. When you use that kind of controlled vocabulary to search, it will ensure that the article results you retrieve are relevant to your topic and that the terms you enter are a major focus of that article. And that you don't have to worry about things like British versus American spellings. It will tell you which term that particular resource wants to use for that particular concept that you have. resource you're using either doesn't have a controlled vocabulary option or that is not the route that you want to take when it comes to doing uh, literature search, you can use these 
library tools and search strategies to help you do a more comprehensive literature search. Um, like Jeannie showed in the chart, we would combine smoking and depression and teenagers. But since we had all those keywords, we also want um, tobacco or nicotine or smoking in one order group and search that with and depression or mood disorders or mental health, whatever. And again, and then put the teenager synonyms in and or themselves. And you'll get to see an example of this if that doesn't make any sense. If you're a visual learner like I am, um, but that will ensure that the article results you retrieve are more comprehensive because you've used a variety of keywords, and the authors are going to pick a different term. And combining the concepts together with and will help make sure the article results you retrieve are about all three of those things, all three of those concepts, instead of just one concept at a time. Another key search tip is to put phrases in quotations. If it's your topic has anything to do with higher education, elementary education, stem cells, any two or more word phrase, you need to put in quotes to find articles that use that phrase exactly. If we did not have quotes, you would retrieve every article that uses the word higher and every article that uses the word education. That is going to get you way too many results, so use phrase searching when appropriate. Um, another little tip is truncation. Many of the library's resources support the truncation tip or tool. And like you see from this example here, we use the root for parent and then use the asterisk for truncate. And it will find articles that use the word parent, parent, parental, parenting, and so on. Regardless of what the endings are, it will retrieve all of them in your search. So that will give you a much more comprehensive view of the articles relevant to your concept. However, a quick caveat, truncation can also go horribly wrong. If, if, if the root word is too broad, um, our favorite example for this is the word cell. If we had C-E-L-L -L and an asterisk, it would retrieve anything from cell, cells, cell phone, cellular phone, cellulitis, cellulite, and so on and so forth. So that would, again, now we're not being relevant to the topic at all. So there are opportunities when truncation would be very helpful, and then other options where it might actually come back to bite you. So be careful, but they are very helpful tools for you to use. Oh, and now we're going to actually get to search in some of the databases. This is the favorite part. From the ECU website, you can access the libraries in that gold bar. It's highlighted there. Thank you. And from this list, you can either select which library you want to go to and visit that library's website directly, or in the top search bar, you will see an option to the database list, which is where you want to go to access all of our resources. Remember, if you're off campus, still to come through this way, so you get prompted to enter your pirate ID and password, which will give you all the full text options that are available to you. So you can go ahead into the database list or the Lawless Library homepage. That's the beauty of it. It all goes to the same place. In, on the Lawless homepage, that same search box is there and the database list is accessible from there or from browsing all of our resources. Um, the resource that I wanted to show you is actually located on the Lava's homepage, so we're just going to click on the Site Info badge to get into the resource. And this is one of the wonderful resources available to you that does have a controlled vocabulary. It calls it a thesaurus and is located in that top purple banner. I'm going to use our depression and smoking search for this. We'll type in the term depression and it will pull up a list of search terms for you to choose from. So we were looking for, let's say, major depression. You can click on that blue heading. That's the term you choose to use. And then check the box next to it to actually add it to your search. Um, it's this, it's not the most user-friendly interface, but that little button that says add, go ahead and add this particular control vocabulary term into your search box. 
But remember, we're not done. We have another term we want to enter, and that's smoking. And this is an instance when the control vocabulary would have been helpful, because if I use the tobacco smoking control vocabulary term, it will retrieve articles regardless of what synonyms I have chosen. And we want this combined with and, because we want articles that show results for depression and tobacco smoking. And our particular topic was focused on the adolescent population. And once we run the search, I'll show you a way to filter your results to only displaying those articles that are relevant to you. So at the top in the search box, we have both of our concepts. We've acquired controlled vocabulary terms for our concepts. And you can run the search. 603 articles is way too many to look through, and we don't know which ones encompass adolescence yet. So once you've run your search for your two controlled vocabulary terms, you have this option in the left-hand column to refine or limit your results to only find articles that are relevant to your topic. In this case, smoking and depression with adolescents or teenagers. In that column, if you scroll down the list, you will see an option for age. And they are very specifically broken up into particular age groups. You'll notice there is one for adolescents in this case. There will be ones for young adult, um, middle adult, things like that. But when we limit this search to adolescents, we go from the 600 articles down to the 125 that are actually related to the adolescent population know that because they're very helpful and give you the article information and the subjects on the results page so you can see right away why this particular article was retrieved for you. And if you click on the article title, you can see a detailed record with an abstract, which is very helpful to let you know whether or not that article is relevant to your needs. But you can also see what subjects that article is tagged with, and you can click on them to add those into your searching. So if you find one good article, it's best to look at its subjects so that you can think of other ways to make your search evolve and be a comprehensive literature review. Now this is one way to search with the controlled vocabulary, and now Jeannie's going to show you a database that uses the keyword search functionality um, so you can see how that process would work. I'm going to go straight to the Joiner Library homepage, um, and the resource that I'm going to show you is called Scopus. It's a pretty comprehensive database, um, mostly of citations, so you link to the full text. Uh, it is, covers a wide variety of subjects, so you're going to find everything from social sciences, sciences, health sciences, and there are some humanities in it as well. As Christine pointed out, all of the library homepages do have these little blocks for subjects. And you can go to Browse All Resources, and that's going to break it down into different subtopics within the major areas. But what I want to go to is the Browse All Databases by Name in the right corner. And I want to go to the S for Scopus. I can go ahead and click on it. And for most of you, Scopus will be listed under your subject area in the database list, so you don't necessarily have to go that way. But I'm just going this way so you know how to get to it. I'm going to go ahead and add some search fields to it. Kind of just to talk about what you can use this database for. Um, again, it is an abstract database. So you're going to have to link to the full text. By default, the search is to article title, abstract, and keywords. So it's already limited a little bit in your searching. That may or may not work for you. And I'll show you an example of um, how you can get different results that way. I can enter in my topic, and I'm going to do an OR search so you can see how that works. So you notice I put parentheses around artificial sweetener and OR sugar substitute. So I was just going to concentrate on those two terms for an OR search. And then I can add my second term to this box down here. And I'm going to do obesity. I'm going to run the search first, where it's going to search all of the record. So I'm going to go to all fields. And what that means is that it's going to search anywhere within um, the full text. So this picks up all the fields, and that's going to look at everything listed in the detailed record, including author affiliation, author names, etc. And I can go ahead and run my 
search. So I get 172 documents listed. This database does sort by date um, naturally. So the newest resources you're going to get at the top, you may want to change that and change it to relevance, and that's going to change the articles that are up at the top for you. So this should be more um, relevant to your topic that you're searching. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then that updates it. Some of my articles in my first search are still at the top. Um, I can go ahead and go into one of these. I'm going to go into the second one. And just kind of talk about what you're seeing. To get to the full text, you want to hit that Find a button. You'll see that throughout all of our databases. You have the abstract. And then down here at the bottom, you do have some keywords that you can use. Uh, for example, I may want to use non-caloric sweeteners instead of artificial sweeteners. Um, that might be a better term for me. What you'll also notice about this database, and this is probably one of the most unique features about this database, is that it has cited by documents. Um, so this article came out in November 2013. It's already been cited by six documents, um, and those documents are listed within Scopus. So if it's a journal that's not indexed in Scopus, it's not going to pick up that citation. Um, but what I can do with that is I can click on View All Citing Documents over here on the right. And that's going to list all of those documents, and I can look at them. Um, they may be more related to my topic. And that's one way if you're doing something, a uh, comprehensive literature review, that you can move forwards and backwards um, with those cited references. So I'm going to show you how this search changes pretty significantly when I go back to my article title abstract keywords, so the default search. And I only get 11 documents, so it's drastically different than my first search. That may or may not work for you, but keep that in mind that how you run your search is going to give you different results of pretty much every time unless you use the same terms. And I also want to point out that some databases like Scopus, um, PubMed, Ovid, will keep track of your search. So you can send that search to yourself so you know what terms you use, how you set it up. Um, you can also create an account within Scopus, um, which is a free account. And you can set an alert so that when new articles are published and will show up in the search, um, you'll receive those articles and notification. So really quickly, I'm going to show you one more thing that you can do with this database. And that is to do an author search. Yes, you'll find that authors find topics they enjoy and will publish frequently on those topics. So it's very helpful to use Scopus to find out what other articles that author might have published. Scopus will create a nice author profile for you. You can click on it, and that's going to give you all of the citations um, within this database. And you can go to the Cited By feature again, and then that'll filter to his most cited citations. So it's most likely going to be um, his key pieces of work. So again, that's another way that you can use some of these features to help you with your literature review. So the next database that I'm going to talk about is um, ProQuest Dissertations and Theses. I'm going to go back the same way that I did to Scopus. And this is only a database on dissertations and theses, but it can be very helpful for finding more references, um, as well as finding some theses and dissertations that came out in your area, um, specifically with the NECU as well. And I'm just going to do a citation phrase search. And hit search. And I was only going to look for that phrase, Queen Anne's Revenge, which is what I want. Um, I get 11 results, which is what, 14 results, excuse me, which is what I expected. Um, most of these dissertations are from East Carolina, so that's one way that you can limit to it. You can access the full text. You'll see that her references are listed down here that you can click on. And then over here, you also have university institutions. So if you want to look at what was published um, in your department at ECU, you can always look into that as well. So some other places that you might get some really useful information for your dissertation or thesis 
is through grade literature, and that is pretty much in every field, um, significantly in health and science. But that can include publications like technical reports, data sets, market research reports, conference proceedings, poster presentations, you know, a wide variety of things. And so it can be very difficult to find those resources. So some places that you might want to look, um, government has a lot of search engines that you can search. One of these is USA.gov, so you can limit it only to government sources. There's also sites like Gray Literature, um, graylit.org, which is a medical site for medical gray literature. Some databases like Scopus will tell you if if something is a conference report or poster presentation, and you can refine it to that if you need to. And then you also have the option to do an advanced Google search um, by doing site colon dot gov. So now you've found your information. How do you know if it's going to be good for your project? Evaluating resources. <laughs> First thing you want to look at is credibility. So you want to look at who wrote the article or the report that you're looking at. Um, what are their credentials? Do they have a PhD, master's? Is it peer reviewed? And in a lot of our databases, there is a checkbox to limit to only peer reviewed articles if that's what you need. And if you do find an article, if you're not sure if it's peer reviewed, one place you can look is just look at the journal website and they'll tell you um, if they do a peer reviewed process. The other part that you want to look at is accuracy. So a lot of that is timeliness, and that depends on the subject area you're in. If you're in something like science or medicine, you may need something a little more up to date. Um, if it's something like history, some of those key pieces of work are a little bit older. You also want to look at the audience and purpose. So what is this piece of publication for? Is it for academic audience? Uh, is it for kids? And how can you use it within your paper? A few other things you might want to look at are reasonableness and objectivity? Is there a strong bias in the article? Do the methods presented seem to make sense? And are the results they reported um, objective and valid? Um, one way that you can look into that a little more closely is if the article you found was um, published through a funded research project. project. You might want to look at where that funding came from and make sure that that funder would not have an interest in whether what, what conclusions that the article, article authors came up with. So that's helpful. And additionally, you can look at the references that the article you're using cited. See, is it, does it feel comprehensive? Does it feel like the reference list that they provided got them the background information they needed to work on the article that they wrote themselves? So there's lots of things to look at. There's a wonderful frequently asked question that will walk you through the steps of how to read a research article because the, it, I think it's three passes they recommend you read it three times for full comprehension but the first time is just hitting key parts like the introduction, the method section, the author's conclusions, things like that. So there's a great frequently asked question for that and we're going to show you where you can get help from the librarians before we close here. So any of our library um, homepages will have a get help option in the upper right hand corner. If you click on that, that's going to give you the option for chat or phone number. Um, it's also going to have a link for Ask a Librarian service, which will include options for text, um, a research consultation. And then there's also the frequently asked questions, which Christine mentioned, that fantastic question of how to read a research article. Yes. Um, and you can find that there. Thank you all very much for coming, and we do want to encourage you to please ask for help when you need it. And depending on the topic you've chosen for theses and dissertations, it may be worth your while to set up that research consultation to work with the librarian to make sure you've got a comprehensive search planned. Thank you very much. Thank you.